going with a more casual look uh, for delivering the sermon this week. Uh, I've got the headphones on because Owen is in the other room uh, listening to TV, uh, watching TV, and I don't want any of the TV sounds to bleed over um, into my recording uh, here on Friday afternoon in the dining uh, room of my house. So the text um, that Chris read for us, uh, when I think of that passage, I, like many of you, probably go straight to the, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and uh, especially the part that says, no one comes to the Father except through me. Um, it is one of those Bible texts that is often used used as a theological weapon um, or kind of a, a proof text to show that Christianity is the right uh, religion and that we um, shouldn't be too accepting of other faiths because they are not going to get into heaven um, because somehow this proves that Jesus uh, said so. Um, and that is very unfortunate uh, because when you read that verse in the context of everything that is going on here, uh, this is Jesus' farewell discourse to his disciples. He's um, preparing them uh, for his death, which is coming. It's, it's completely a text of encouragement. It is a text of tenderness and love. It's not a theological treaty. It's not some exclusive statement about Christianity that he was making in a, you know, pluralistic world to denounce other faiths. It is simply a message of encouragement to his disciples. I mean, read how it starts out. Do not let your hearts be troubled. There are many dwelling places. I am going to prepare a place for you. In, in heaven, there is a place with God for you. How can you know the way? Don't worry. I am the way. You know me. Those who really want to know God and be with God can do so by knowing me. And, and you're my disciples, so as far as anyone can, can really know me, you do. It's a message of encouragement, and it's a message I think we especially um, need right now. Uh, I have always seen these passages from from John's uh, from Jesus' farewell discourse in John during the Easter season, and it's kind of weird to see them uh, in this season of the church year because we typically think of those as you know they're they're Holy Week texts. They're right before Jesus dies texts. They're for Monday Thursday and Good Friday and, and, and the crucifixion. Uh, and so in this, the midst of this Easter season, when we're supposed to be celebrating the resurrection, it's sort of head scratching to, to, to see those in, in there. And we ask, why did the lectionary compilers put this text for, for this day? Um, and I don't know why, but I was wondering this week if maybe it's sort of like bread for the journey, um, that uh, even during the Easter season, even after Easter, we're going to go through these Good Friday moments. There's going to be um, times when it is hard to believe that the resurrection is true. Uh, and when we go back and hear these words of encouragement in a Good Friday period of Jesus to his disciples on the actual Good Friday, um, it makes it more meaningful for us. And we, we can draw on having heard um, this this week uh, when, when we need encouragement. Um, and we certainly need encouragement this week, I think. Um, just today, we found out that about 15% of the population of our country is uh, unemployed. Um, there were 
headlines earlier this week that there are these uh, reports from the government that, that predict that hundreds of thousands of more people um, may die in the United States that, that one, than, than what was originally expected um, from COVID-19 as, as we loosen restrictions. Um, and then we have all of these stories about you know, the, the new culture war of, of wearing a mask or, or not wearing a mask or, or, you know, opening up your business or not opening up your business as a way to kind of claim which side um, you're on. And so I think we need this encouragement. We, we need this text um, to keep us grounded. Uh, it's hard to believe in God and believe in Christ right now. Um, it is really hard, but that is what we're called to do. Uh, there are, the, I think, the same the same forces that would have us use passages like this in the Bible. Um, not for encouragement, but to, you know, judge other people or to exalt ourselves. That th those are the same forces that um, during times like these would uh, say that we need to be fearful. We need to be sort of um, suspicious and on our guard um, and, you know, pull back, draw inward, um, take care of ourselves and our family rather than worry about other people um, when the message of the gospel is the opposite. And our shared life together depends on us doing the opposite. It depends on us being vulnerable. Um, and taking chances, and in this time where um, it, we have reason to be suspicious, where we're afraid of getting sick, where we're afraid of losing our job, where we're afraid of losing a business, where we're afraid of losing a, a house um, or you know a mortgage, uh, to believe in God and to be compassionate anyway, um, and to be kind anyway, and encouraging anyway. And so that is what I am going to challenge us to do this week, to go out of your way to be generous and open and kind and compassionate, to look for reasons to do that, to, to summon the courage to do that ha with your faith in Christ and in God's love and in God's providential care and grace as, as your security blanket, as, as, um, as the, the foundation that lets you do that. Um, whether it is in your interactions online or in the virtual world with other people who might be on the opposite side of, of our partisan divide um, in, in internet forums or, or comments to, to, to show grace and compassion um, and friendliness or, or, or if it is uh, with you know other strangers in real life uh, in, in the grocery store or, or on the road. Um, or maybe it's by uh, offering a phone call um, to a church member, just taking the time and the energy to pick up the phone and, and call someone and tell them that you care about them. Um, to write an old-fashioned letter to a family member that you haven't talked to. Um, to, uh, to give um, to someone who asks um, or to an organization. Give... Uh, in an amount that might make you nervous. Um, let's look for those opportunities to do that. Um, and let's also look for opportunities and, and stories to be encouraged, to look for um, good news, to look for other people doing the same thing, um, and then to tell that story. And I, so I look forward to, um, to trying to do that myself uh, this week. Um, 
and uh, to hearing your stories of how that has gone for you this week. Um, amen. <laughs>